over there. Change of pace this morning. Um, this last week or so, I guess, since uh, receiving and starting to use the Osmo Pocket 3, I've actually been quite feeling quite flat and definitely not motivated. So I thought today, you know what? It's grey, it's overcast. What can I do? I need to do something. So all I've done is to come out with a little infrared converted Lumix GF1 and the 17mm wide angle from Olympus. Now, whether I'll see anything <laughs> really is in the lap of the gods. I'm in my local park, Princess Park in Liverpool. I've just got the one lens, one camera and the Osmo. So I'm going to be looking for compositions within the trees, perhaps within some of the graffiti that's on the walls and the way that some of the uh, some of the overgrown uh, weeds are framed against some of the graffiti. So we'll give that a go. You never know. The old uh, derelict summer house there in someone's back garden. We'll take one anyway, see what we see what it looks like. Struggling for inspiration today. black and white which is essentially what I'm shooting today um, if you shoot black and white compared to color you do need to sort of <laughs> rewire your brain you're looking for tonal contrasts as well as composition but you've got to completely block out the colors that might attract you now, of course, with infrared, it's even more extreme. This is a pretty good example, I think. This is the um, northern end of the lake in Princess Park. And as you can see, it's full of reeds or rushes. I'm not quite sure what exactly to call those at any given point in time. I've got a couple of coots down there. Um, and of course, the surface is covered in this weed. Uh, so, in the normal colour spectrum, it's overall green. Let's see what I can conjure up with an infrared shot. So the first real test of the DJI wireless microphone on a windy day. So we'll see how much uh, the little uh, wind muff or dead cat cuts the wind out. Not a lot of wildlife out today. We've got a couple of um, Canada geese here, the usual coots, a couple of mallard ducks with their 
new brood of ducklings, but very few gulls, which uh, gulls tend to um, flock here in rather large numbers, mainly when people are feeding or trying to feed other birds with seed and bread and things like that. But thankfully, all very quiet today. I'm just considering a shot from somewhere around here beneath this willow tree. Again, with the old boathouse in the background in the distance there. So um, it's a little bit of a lopsided composition, I think, at the moment. the uh, parapet wall of the old boathouse and um, although I've taken one from here uh, I'm really not too happy with the far distance we've got the houses there I mean I might be wrong about this but um, when I look at it straight away it doesn't really inspire me <laughs> it's not saying much because I'm not very inspired at all at the moment like me? Do you struggle sometimes to find inspiration? Look for ideas? Well, I'm not going to suggest that that's a good time to go out with your camera, but it's potentially a good time to experiment and try something new. If you're always doing urban shots, which is mainly me, then try something different like I'm doing today. It's trees, it's vegetation, a little bit of landscape, I guess you can say, thrown in. If you're always doing uh, bird photography, very specialist area, maybe put away your long zoom lens and um, again, try something just a little bit different. But of course, you also run a risk if you go out and try and do the same subject matter when you're really not feeling it, then you run the risk of getting even more disheartened. So I'm not gonna suggest that you put yourself in that category, but certainly, I would say consider, as I take a seat, <laughs> I would say consider doing something different to what you normally try. Maybe try some portraits, do some family stuff, pets, something that gets you away from your normal subject matter. Might just, might just click and it might just uh, refresh your creative juices. Tell me if you agree or whether I'm barking up entirely the wrong tree, which won't be unusual for me. We have the um, island on the right-hand side, 
I'll just show you the uh, little stretch of water that separates us from the island itself. And not sure if you'll be able to pick it out in the um, video footage, but in the trees over there on the island is the memorial, if you like, to Nelson Mandela. When you get an infrared camera or when you start shooting infrared with a conventional camera and an infrared filter, you do have options. I purchased a converted Panasonic Lumix GF1, which had been altered to register in the 720 nanometer range. Now that's good for monochrome images. Not so good if you want to produce a lot of vivid false color images. So you have a choice to make really. So before the bridge was constructed and access to this island was very, very limited indeed, there were a series of these smaller concrete pillars, each of which is engraved with a saying from Nelson Mandela himself. But then once the bridge was constructed, the park friends of Princess Park and Liverpool City Council decided to increase the number and we now have a lot more of these concrete pillars and the new ones are larger height and unbelievably as you can see idiots who don't give a damn about the natural environment have been here having a drink, albeit soft drinks, I hope, cigarettes, and there's even a supermarket shopping trolley over here. Unbelievable. Anyway, I'm gonna move all this crap out of the way, pardon my French, and take some shots. <laughs> If you are wondering why they are circular concrete pillars then it's quite simple and you may have already gathered from the inscription on this one that the only place that Nelson Mandela and other inmates could make their own gardens was in empty oil drums when they were imprisoned I think in Robin Island and, and somewhere else. So that's the relevance of them. And uh, some of these sayings are very inspirational. So there you go. Something else to inspire me. Thank you, Mr. Mandela. So there we are, um, undoubtedly a fairly short video. And I just wanted to maybe get across a couple of points really. Don't think you've always got to go out with your main camera, your most expensive camera, your latest camera, your latest lens. Dig out something, maybe if you've got, you know, a choice of two or three cameras and lenses use something different that also will help you to maybe find some inspiration i mean i've come out this morning with the little gf1 the olympus 17 mil 2.8 i've done quite a few using manual focus and then switched over to autofocus now you know windy days like this may not be conducive to stills photography when you're trying to photograph vegetation and flowers and things but just standing and watching the wind moving these reeds around it's so peaceful and relaxing now I'm about to go back home and have a look at these images 
I have no high hopes for any of them. And undoubtedly, they're going to take quite a bit of editing in um, either on one photo raw or affinity photo. Undecided yet, to be honest with you. Both are equal, you know, both have their pros and cons, but I'm fully expecting to have to do quite a lot in post-production with them. And even then, I'm probably not going to have that many that I'm super happy with. I'm going to show you the results. I'll show you them straight out of camera. And after I've tweaked them, you can make your own mind up. Sometimes you just have to make the effort, you know? As for the rest of this video, well, it's all going to boil down to what I sound like, whether I'm making any sense whatsoever. It'd be surprising if I do. Um, and also the images. So, as I now make my way back home, I am going to say, enjoy your photography and any other hobby that you might be interested in. Enjoy it, look after yourselves, and I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.